DJI's new mini FPV drone, the Avata, just got a big firmware update, adding some much requested features to the filming modes. But the question is now, is this the right drone for you? And if not, who is it for? Hey, I'm Rob. Welcome back to Photobike. Let's start from the beginning. What makes the Avata different from other drones? The Avata is DJI's second FPV drone. The main difference when flying FPV is the way you view the camera when you're flying. A traditional style drone like the Mini 3, for example, you would fly using a controller with either a built-in screen or using your phone. Whereas with FPV, you wear goggles, fully immersing yourself into sort of the cockpit of the drone. When flying super fast, around obstacles and through tight spaces gives you much better situational awareness. As you get a real sense of the speed that you're traveling at and you can see directly down the barrel of the camera with your point of view to see exactly where you're going. Now, as I mentioned, this is DJI's second FPV drone. The first being the aptly named DJI FPV. This was DJI's first forte into the FPV style of drones, and they started with quite a bang. With a top speed of nearly 90 kilometers per hour, it is very, very fast. But the Avata is DJI's second entry into the FPV realm, as the idea for DJI getting into the FPV space is to make FPV flying much more accessible. For instance, I'm not a veteran FPV flyer, I don't claim to be, and setting either one of these drones into full manual mode would most definitely end with me either slamming on the emergency brake button or crashing full pelt into the ground. However, DJI do allow you to connect your goggles to either a phone or tablet, along with either the motion controller or the standard controller to train in their flight simulator. So you can get comfortable with the controls and feel of any of their drones without risking crashing your brand new purchase. With the original FPV, uh, DJI introduced the motion controller, which now comes as standard with the Avata. And if you want the original style manual controller, you will have to buy that separately. But I still think the motion controller is an absolutely revolutionary way to fly a drone. Other than just getting an idea for where button locations are, you'll be able to hand it to just about anyone. And with zero drone flying experience, they'll be able to rip around like a pro. The only limitations to this are getting those cinematic shots are a little bit trickier as, as in the standard mode, the camera follows direction of the controller. So if you're looking to fly straight up, your camera will be looking at the sky. However, if you flip the goggles into head tracking mode, this allows you to have full movement of the camera while using the controller to aim where to go. This allows you to stick tracking a subject with your head while doing maneuvers with the controller. Obviously, unlike most consumer drones, the FPV and the Avata use FPV goggles to fly, which really immerses you into the driver's seat of the drone. Flying at high speeds, the point of view makes making fast and tight maneuvers much easier. And when flying in tight spaces and around obstacles, you get a much better awareness of your surroundings. With the Avata, they have just updated the FPV goggles to the FPV goggles 2 which is a little bit confusing seeing as the goggles for the FPV were called the FPV goggles V2. So now that's the V2 of the original FPV goggles and this is the goggles 2. At the moment, the FPV goggles 2 only supports the Avata, but possibly in an update they could support the FPV in the future as the original FPV goggles work with both drones. As you can see, the FPV goggles 2 are much smaller, making it much easier to fit in your bag and go. The removable four antennas on the FPV goggles are also replaced with these always attached flip up ones. And instead of the slightly hard to use toggle switch controls on the FPV, they've now gone for a much more intuitive capacitive touch design, making it much easier to use. The FPV goggles too have a slightly reduced resolution over the two, but it's still plenty sharp and crisp when flying around. The focusing mechanism on the bottom as well has had a bit of a redesign, having these 
dials that let you really dial in the focus on both eyes. And along with the smaller size, you also even get a longer battery life. Now going back to the differences between the FPV and the Avata, as you can see, they do look quite a bit different. That's because the Avata is actually a Cinewoop style drone. Whereas the FPV is made for maximum speed and performance, the Avata, as you can see with the prop guards, is kind of built to be flown indoors and in tight spaces. Weighing in at only 405 grams, it's almost half the weight of the FPV. Tie its super compact form factor with the small goggles, you can see how easy this could be to chuck in any standard backpack. Because you really struggle to get this unwieldy, big hunking thing and this and a controller in many backpacks. Also, the prop guards on the Avata make it surprisingly robust. In most cases, the drone will just be able to take off straight away after a little tumble. The prop's completely intact. And even if it gets turned upside down, you can activate turtle mode, where it will attempt to self-right completely on its own, ready for takeoff again. Compare this to the FPV, however, where you probably only get one, maybe two hard crashes in this thing, and you're buying a new drone. Another bonus for the Avata is that it seems like DJI are making available replacement parts. So if you do manage to break just one simple part in this thing, you should be able to replace it without having to buy a whole new drone. Now, both of these drones are very, very quick. The FPV launch with a whopping 88 mile per hour max speed, which is absolutely insane. Going that speed is very, very scary. But the Avata is still very quick, maxing out at about 60 miles an hour. But 60 miles an hour is nothing to scoff at, as it's still extremely fast for a little drone. Uh, as comparing that to DJI's consumer drones like the uh, Mini 3, for example, that only tops out at 35 miles an hour. It's like nearly double. In many ways, the Avasa seems to be a better version of the FPV. All you're really losing is that top speed. However, because this drone is so much lighter, the FPV performs much better in high wind. But these are sort of made for two different things. The FPV is definitely built for more large open spaces and chasing after sports cars on tracks. Its extra weight also means it performs much better in high wind situation than the Avata, where the Avata is more for dynamic, indoors to outdoors, very close up, obstacle based shooting. But the Avata 60 miles an hour top speed is nothing to scoff at. Plus the aggressive, very open props of the FPV would probably not be the safest thing to fly around inside your house. The one thing the Avata seems to blow the FPV out of the water with though is the upgraded camera. And with the most recent update that came out last week, it just got even better. The Avata can film 4K up to 60 FPS and it includes D-Cine-like, so it gives you much more flexibility when you're color grading the footage, maintaining all that detail in the lows and highs. And with the most recent update, they just added 10-bit color depth. This brings the Avata much more in line with the recent release of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. The Mini 3 Pro also can film 4K up to 60 with the Cine-like, and that includes the 10-bit mode as well. Now, the DJI Avata's footage should be near on par with the Mini 3 Pro. However, you'll be definitely getting very different shots with both drones. When flying the Avata, as it's an FPV drone, the movements are much more dynamic. There's a lot of wobble, a lot of shake, a lots of hard turns that really tilt your footage. You can battle this a bit with their uh, built-in Rocksteady stabilization, which in most cases is great. And if you want to really steady out your footage, you can even activate the horizon lock, which will lock the horizon dead straight in all your footage. This does introduce some blurring and zooming and some cropping on your footage, however especially when doing really tight dynamic turns. But another thing added in the most recent firmware update is the introduction of gyro recording. So now when you turn off all stabilization modes in the drone, it records the gyro data directly to the video file, allowing you to use third party software to stabilize your footage. Because sometimes with built in stabilization, all the processing is being done on the fly and you can be left with some artifacts and it's not great looking blurry footage, but you can use something like GyroFlow, for example, which is open source, free to use software, which will interpolate 
all that gyro information in your footage and generate a much more dialable in stabilization. You can go wild here, you can go all the way to max horizon level and everything. You might end up with a bit of a zoomy image still, uh, but you can go a bit more subtle on it if you want to maintain that quality. But along with these great new features in the update, it also added a few things that people aren't too happy with. In the US, for example, uh, there seems to have been a premature introduction into remote ID into this thing. To arm the Avata in the US, it now requires you to have your phone connected to it at all times so it can broadcast remote ID. This is a bit of a premature addition as the regulations, to my knowledge, don't actually go into effect until September next year. So quite a few people aren't too pleased. With it. Although it does seem that once you're up and flying, you can disconnect your phone and it will still let you fly around. But who knows if they change that in an upcoming firmware update. Us in the UK, however, are not affected by this, so we don't have to worry for now. <laughs> but another good thing did come from the update. Upon release, the Avata did have some reports of it randomly nosediving and crashing, seemingly out of nowhere. So DJI have added a new safety mechanism where it detects where the drone is suddenly flipping too fast and it will apply its brake feature automatically. However, this does apply even in manual mode. So if you're trying to do acrobatics and stuff, you can trigger the auto brake mode. Uh, so some manual mode flyers aren't too happy with this either. We did have it crash once when we first uh, got the drone, but we didn't apply any updates to it. Uh, while we were going to land inside our studio, as you can see here, it did just suddenly decide to go full pelt into the wall. Luckily, it's very robust and it survived this no problem. In conclusion, the Avata is an absolutely fantastic little drone. But is it the right drone for you? Well, if you're looking for that fast paced, in and out of tight spaces around obstacles at super fast speeds, real action shooter style, then it's absolutely perfect for that. However, if you're looking for doing really slow cinematic twirls of big open landscapes, this probably wouldn't be the best option. That's where I'd recommend something more like the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro, or maybe more so the Mini 3 Pro as that is more matches the camera quality of the Avata. Also the Mini series has a bunch of automated flight modes and tracking modes. So it will just kind of fly for you. So you don't have to do even anything where the Avata, all that it has automated wise is auto return to home. But if the Avata isn't quite enough speed and craziness for you, that may be where the FPV comes in, where if you want to really chase after some sports cars and go absolutely crazy flying super fast over mountains. However, the camera on this is a bit outdated now, and it wouldn't surprise me if they did do an update and refresh to this in the near future. But again, thank you very much for watching our review on the DJI Avata and its updates. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you wanna keep up to date with any content we put out, as we'll definitely be putting out more drone videos in the future, hit the bell as well. I've been Rob, this has been Photobyte. See you later, bye-bye.